Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my channel. My name is Frank, and today we're going to be installing a silent mainboard in the Creality Ender 3. So this has to be the printer I recommend the most to people. It's the Ender 3. It's about $160. It's the, probably the best starter printer you can get. However, it is a little loud because it's on the cheaper end. It doesn't boast some of the features like the more expensive printers. Now you're not going to lose quality with this, but you, it is going to be, like I said, a lot louder. Now for like 30 to $40, you can get a new main board or a motherboard if you want to kind of call it that. This is the control board for the entire printer. And this actually makes the printer almost completely silent. It turns the loudest thing into the fan. And I don't mean it makes the fan louder. I mean, everything on it gets so quiet. All you can really hear is just the fan kind of going. So this is absolutely a, an amazing investment. Now it doesn't really impact quality or performance. It's just gonna make the printer quiet. So if it's in a room with you, if it's you know in the other room and you hear it vibrating and moving around the house, this is definitely something worthwhile getting into, but it is not one of the required you know uh, upgrades that I recommend. We're gonna hop into it. It's very, this is gonna be a really quick and dirty one. There isn't much to this. It's literally gonna be popping this little panel off right here. I'm gonna take some shots of things, explain how I do it, um, how I label, and uh, really the key to this is just opening up the panel, taking a lot of pictures with your phone to make sure you you know get the wires back into the right spot. It's a, it's a direct swap. This goes in exactly how the stock one goes in. You plug it all back up and you turn it back on. Now you can't flash the firmware in this without installing a bootloader onto it. it this, these boards, you can't flash like that. Now there's aftermarket ones you can get, but that's a you know, video for another time. Um, there's tons of research out there. You can check like 3D Printing Nerd and Shep and you know all that, all those other videos. Um, but since this is the one I recommend the most, I wanted to go and do a silent board install for you guys. And I have this Ender 3 and another one sitting in the other room. So I'll be able to compare the before and after and we'll get some good audio later. And if you just want to skim to the end of the video and hear the audio comparison, feel free. So we're going to go ahead and get this off and you'll be able to install this with all the tools that your printer came with. So let's get started. This new gimbal setup I got is amazing. So first thing we're going to want to do is make sure your printer is unplugged. Don't do this while the printer is plugged in. That's just a bad juju. So let me get make sure I got some good lighting here because I don't want you guys not to be able to see this. All right, so this is the panel we're gonna wanna pop off. There's two screws here, and then we're gonna need to do is move the bed all the way forward to get access to this back screw. So that's pretty easy to do. Now, I said it in a lot of other videos, just don't break torque with the round end of your um, Allen keys. Always use the flat end to break that torque, and then you can spin them out with the flat end. So that's broken. And let's just go ahead and pop this off. Make sure you put your screws somewhere safe. This way uh, you don't lose track of them or, and or just lose them in general. All right, with that, this panel will pop off and the fan is plugged into the board. So make sure you don't rip that wire off and you're gonna go ahead and reach in there. And right from this point, I would take a picture with your phone. This way you can keep, a tra keep an eye on absolutely everything. Now, some of these wires are labeled. Your, um, your stepper motor wires are all X, Y, Z, and E. Uh, a lot of them can only go into one spot, so just you know, be, be mindful of that. But some of the other ones can get a little bit confusing. So we're gonna pull out the ones that we know where they go. So this fan can only go here. So we're gonna go ahead and pop that off. And then you'll notice that some of them are actually hot glued in. So it might be a little difficult to see. Let me see if I can get a better angle on this. So right in here, you can actually see all the hot glue that's kind of sitting around here. So you're gonna to need to be careful. You can kind of pry and scrape it off, but you're gonna to need to get the hot glue out of there. And then just like how you built it, there are tabs. So this is your E, your extruder, your Z, and this only has one Z on it, and your X and your Y. So these can only go in back in those respective spots. The board itself is labeled. So you can go ahead and kind of tuck these off to the side. The wire for your control board, your control panel, this should come right out too. Move that out of the way. And then we have a couple extras here. So actually one very well-placed picture will take care of all of this because the order they go in is actually white, black, uh, Z stop, Y stop, X stop, and then you have, I believe this is one of your fan motors. I'm not sure what this wire is. Now, this might happen. I actually pulled the socket off of the board. It's not the end of the world, don't worry about it. All you have to do is break the super glue off and take the socket back off, see? And then you can place it directly back onto the board. Just make sure you put it in the proper orientation or else you'll plug them, you can potentially plug something back in backwards. So don't worry about that if that happens. The two wires on the end for me, the, uh, the X and the, um, the white ones and the black ones actually are kind of stuck together. So they'll actually plug right back in pretty easily. All right, so every all of this is unplugged, which is good. So you can kind of, you're not gonna have too much room to move that out of the way, but don't worry too much about that. 
So the next thing we're gonna to wanna to pay attention to is our power wires. Now, it, it, as long as you take a good picture, they won't be hard to mess up because we have small black, small or small red, small black, big red, big black, but then there's two red wires for your heated bed and your hot end. Don't mix these up. So however you need to label these to make sure these go back in the right sockets, make sure you do that. So to make sure I put these back in the right spot, I've gone and bent the left one all the way out and then the right one's kind of cocked over to the side. And with everything unplugged, we can go ahead and take the board out itself. And there's just some Allen keys sitting around it. It looks like there is one, two, three, four. Go ahead and loosen them. Now these shouldn't be in there too tight. Um, so you, sh you probably can use just the round side of your Allen key, but again, just be careful with it. Yeah, so these aren't in there tight at all. And that's it. That's your main board removed. Make sure you go and take all the screws out of it. There should be, like I said, four. And you're just gonna go in and drop the board in and I'm just gonna go ahead and put this back in and we'll kind of talk about it when it's done. But before anything, what I wanna do is actually loosen all these screws right here um, a good amount. This way I can actually slip the wires into. Now these contacts right here, now you'll see it as I loosen this, it actually opens. You're not gonna, right, let, me, let me get this down. So as I loosen this, you can see it opening. So you're gonna to wanna to put the wire up near the top, not the bottom, because as you tighten it, you're gonna to wanna to pull and suck the wire up. Um, a good way to make sure that you have a good connection is when you're done, just give the wire a little tug. If it pops out, you don't have it in the right spot. So just go ahead and open all those up. So that's actually pretty interesting. Uh, this is the first time a board's actually been a little different than when I've installed it. Now everything's gonna go back in the same, but what's pretty cool is on the silent board, Creality's gone and added a, actually a fuse. So that's really cool of them to do. There's an extra connection for a fan. So you, instead of one fan connector, there's two. Everything else seems to be the same. And then there's another port, uh, GV uh, ground voltage in, ground voltage out. I'm not sure what that's for. Um, it could be for something like a BL touch or uh, really not too positive what that's for, but maybe a little bit of research, one of you can figure it out. I'll probably look into it after this video, but uh, I'm, it's not getting utilized, so I'm not too worried about it. But the, uh, the extra fuse, that's pretty cool of them to do, so. All right, the board's back in and tight, so now we're gonna go and start uh, actually plugging and connecting everything in. handy little tool to have while installing the wires is just a pair of tweezers. Um, it's really helping get these little wires. This space is a lot more confined than the other printers, so feel free to uh, get some tools to assist you with this process for sure. All right, so there is a little bit of a difference. I did find out what was moved here and it was while I was installing it. Okay, so there's two plugs here on the new silent board um, labeled fan one and fan two. And then there's an extra three pin plug that's now added right there. On the old board, that plug doesn't exist. And instead of having fan one and fan two, it's actually fan one. And then this one's just labeled normal fan. I'm pretty sure that fan one still needs to go into fan one here. So I need to move this plug to there. And then the fan that's on your control box that we took out initially is gonna go into fan two. But I'm actually gonna plug it in with this top panel off just to make sure it actually, like I said, turns on properly. And another thing I just discovered, the plugs for your X, Y, Z, and E are backwards where the openings are facing in. On here, the openings are facing out so you're gonna need to actually twist the wires around to get them to plug in so I was having a little problem uh, plugging in the E uh, stepper control there wasn't enough slack so don't pull directly on that wire what I had to do is actually just grab the whole harness and kind of fish it through um, there's definitely enough slack for it so it looks like everything is installed properly um, I'm pretty happy with this Okay, everything's sitting here, everything's plugged in, ready to go. Uh, we're plugged in, I switched the power supply to the proper voltage, and we're gonna turn it on for the first time. Um, as I was thinking about it, this fan won't turn on initially. Uh, it only turns on when I start heating it, so we'll power it on. Uh, the cooling fan on the hot end should uh, turn on first, and then we'll actually have to go and preheat for everything to turn on, so let's... Ooh, okay, cool. 
All right, everything's reading, 20 degrees. Uh, all of this looks pretty good. Um, the screen looks a little different for sure. All right, everything's there. Let's go ahead and preheat first to make sure. All right, both fans came on. All right, yeah. Um, both will come on and then it should uh, it should actually change control when usually when you do your first layer it'll turn off the cooling fan and uh, or typically the first layer of your raft. So that should be okay. Um, I'll know once we actually send a little test print to this that everything's working okay. But then popping this off and swapping the plugs really won't be that big of a deal but I'm pretty sure it's right. We'll see. So let me get this uh, panel back on or at least down there and we can do some auto homing and see how it moves. All right, everything's back in. Oh, by the way, um, that extra sensor that was sitting down here on the board, uh, that extra plug, that's actually for a filament runout sensor. And then the other extra port is for a, um, a auto leveling or a BL touch. So that's pretty cool that they give you that option. So uh, let's auto home it for the first time and see what happens. I wanna hear it before we uh, do the full comparison. All right, auto home. Oh my Wow, that might be the, the quietest printer. That's, that, this might be my quietest printer now. All right, let's get it back in the other room and we'll run a little test print and we'll uh, compare notes on the two Ender 3s next to each other. Okay, the lighting in this room is terrible, but I've got my upgraded Ender 3 right here and then I have the stock Ender 3 down here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna auto home them and I'm gonna get the mic really close to all of it. And I have them in the exact same position, bed out, nozzle over, gantry up in the same spots. We're gonna auto home them and we're gonna hear the difference of the non-upgraded stock Ender 3 and the Ender 3 with the silent board. So here we go. Okay, that's absolutely insane. That is wonderful. Um, it is, that, like I said, that might be one of the most quiet printers I have now, which is really, really great for this. Um, it made it just unbelievably silent, especially compared to the Stock Ender 3. Uh, I'm probably gonna go and get a silent board for my, stock Ender, my other Stock Ender 3 now. Both my Ender 5 Pluses are upgraded to silent boards. My CR-10S is upgraded to a silent board and the Max kind of comes with a silent board. So all of these, when they're running, the loudest things you should hear now are really the fans. And uh, the fans on the CR-10 Max are probably the loudest, but that's, you know, I'm okay with that. That kind of does it for this video, guys. Uh, that was it. Uh, the, the silent board really makes that big of a difference in the Ender. Um, I'm still kind of blown away with the differences it makes. Now, I know there are aftermarket boards you can get, um, Big Tree Tech and all these. Uh, that's not what this video is about. This is about installing the Creality silent board and they work fine for me. I haven't had to flash any of them except for my on the ones on my CR10S for the TH3D firmware, but the Ender 5 Plus is, is this stock mix, you know, new silent board dropped right in. The Ender 3 stock firmware dropped in, it's the 4.2.7 and uh, it, it works. So you can go do the research. Um, there's other, like I said, other channels. Go look at those. Uh, they're much more 3D printing focused where I'm more, you know, kind of doing the prop cosplay thing. So. Um, there aren't going to be many more upgrade videos. I, I do have a couple more bits I want to add to the printers and we'll talk about those, but kind of running out of upgrades that make any type of sense. If you guys haven't already, if you could subscribe, that'd be really cool. Um, again, cosplay, props, all that type of stuff, uh, branching out to some other realms. But uh, yeah, I have a lot of these videos coming out um, in regards to this. And I have tons of other tutorials like this scattered around the channel. So make sure you go check those out. Um, I'm going to be doing a couple more review videos on the Ender and the CR-10S since I always recommend them. Go join the Discord, uh, almost 1,200 members. There's a link for it down below. It's free. There's no reason you shouldn't join. Um, it, it's just a wealth of knowledge of 3D printing and cosplay and all the stuff that this channel is revolved around. Or maybe you just want to hang out. Uh, there's people on there who don't plan on getting 3D printers for a few years. They just want to start learning, you know, modeling on all that. So by, uh, by all means, please go join. It's a great community and everybody there is wonderful. That's it for this one, guys. Uh, thanks for watching and have a great day.